Steam has been known as a source of power for over 2,000 years, but it wasn't until the 1700s that any serious attempts were made to harness steam for transportation purposes. Long before the arrival of steam locos, horses were already being used to draw carts along rail tracks at mines and collieries. But it was a Cornishman, Richard Trevithick, who built the first full-scale steam-powered locomotive at Colebrookdale Ironworks in Shropshire. Unfortunately, the locomotive was involved in an accident soon afterwards, so it's doubtful the engine operated. But two years later, in 1804, Trevithick's second unnamed locomotive hauled a train on the world's first railway journey along rails at Penadaran Ironworks near Merthyr Tydfil in South Wales. The railway age had begun. However, there was little interest to adopt the locomotive for haulage as horses were cheap and plentiful. But a lucky consequence of the Napoleonic Wars gave steam locomotives a break. A massive hike in the price of horse fodder revived interest in steam-powered locomotives by mines and collieries. The Middleton Colliery in Leeds became one of the first to patent a rail system in 1811, but they needed an engine. The colliery's manager, John Blenkinsop, instructed Matthew Murray to design a 422 locomotive. Such was the Salamanca's success that a total of 28 locomotives were built in Britain between 1803 and 1823. The industrial railways were drawing wider public attention and demand for a nationwide public railway network was growing. But the engineers had some technical issues to resolve first. So it was George Stevenson's Locomotion No. 1 in 1825 that became the first locomotive to operate on the first public steam railway in the world, the Stockton and Darlington Railway. The locomotion's wheels were linked by coupling rods rather than chains or gears, providing a stronger means of linking axles. Soon afterwards, the first six-wheeled locomotive with a longer wheelbase enabled a larger boiler to be fitted. The Royal George was also the first loco without any intermediate gears or levers, with the wheels driven directly from the cylinders. By 1829, George Stevenson had developed wheels driven directly from the piston rod, working in a crosshead, and also the multi-tubular boiler, which was used in his son's design for the rocket. Winning the Rainhill Trials, the prototype for future locomotive design had evolved. Refinements came thick and fast. One of the Liverpool and Manchester Railways locomotives, Phoenix, had what later became a universal feature, a smoke box, inserted between the chimney blast pipe and the boiler and inside cylinders, which brought greater stability and protection from cold air, became standard. By 1835, the characteristic form of the locomotive was set. The boiler, firebox and smoke box were mounted on frames that also supported the cylinders. The cylinders drove onto large driving wheels, while smaller wheels supplied additional support, helped distribute the engine weight, and guided the locomotive on curved track. Advances in metallurgy assisted in the building of bigger, more powerful locomotives. Wrought iron tires lasted for 60,000 miles, whereas steel tires lasted for 300,000 miles. And improved combustion processes within fireboxes enabled the use of coal, and the introduction in 1841 of the Stevenson Howe link motion allowed expansive working in the cylinders, increasing the power obtained by volume of steam. Other refinements came from overseas, among them the French steam injector in 1860. Locomotives then started to be designed for specific purposes, large-wheeled 422s, 420s and 232s hauled express passenger trains. Tank locomotives, because they carried their fuel on board, were suited to expanding urban routes. Powerful 060s and 080s were introduced for freight work. Today, the United Kingdom can boast more than 100 heritage railways and steam museums, which are home to a remarkable 700 preserved operational engines.
Perhaps one of the finest early British steam locomotives, William Stradley's A1, served for an extremely long period of time in a variety of roles. Introduced in 1872, the A1 began life on the London suburban routes, but was also in service in Shropshire, Scotland, and even as far away as South America. Soon after joining the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway, William Stradley designed a suburban tank locomotive based upon his plans for a six-coupled tank for the Highland Railway. The new LB and SCR engine, built at Brighton Works, needed a low axle weight to run over the lightweight rails and shallow ballasting of the lines in the London area, and high power to haul the heavy commuter trains on steep gradients, especially on the East London Railway and the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway into the city. Following three attempts to get the boiler dimensions right, the first six 24-ton, 700-weight locomotives entered traffic between September and December 1872. For their size, the A1s were astonishing locomotives, easily capable of hauling 12 coach trains on stop-start routes where rapid acceleration rather than sustained speed was required. The Stroudley tanks with a 100-ton train were allowed 35 minutes for a nine and three-quarter mile journey, including 10 station stops. It was this remarkable performance that earned the locomotives the nickname Terrier although some crews refer to them as routers. But the locomotive became the victim of its own success on some lines. So popular were the terrier-hauled South London trains that longer trains beyond the Stroudley's capacity had to be introduced. However, other work was found for the terriers in shunting, branch line duties and light goods work. Despite their popularity with crews and the public alike, in 1898, the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway decided 15 of the locomotives were no longer needed. Four were sold and another nine scrapped. Between 1911 and 1913, 12 Terriers, including Fenchurch, received new boilers, becoming the A1X class, which also increased their weight by just over a ton. A total of 21 Stroudley 060Ts were disposed of between 1898 and 1920 to a variety of establishments, including the Admiralty and New Haven Harbour Company, where Fenchurch was sent because the engine was light enough to cross a bridge at the harbour. Fenchurch returned to Southern Railway ownership, but continued working at New Haven Harbour. Not only was the locomotive one of the 15 terriers inherited by British Railways in the 1948 nationalisation, but when the last Stroudleys were retired in 1963, Fenchurch held the accolade of being the oldest engine to have worked on UK railways. With a one-ton coal capacity, number 72 Fenchurch was purchased as a working engine in the spring of 1964 by the Bluebell Railway in East Sussex to work alongside the 1875-built number 55 Stepney. At 91 years of age back then, Fenchurch was a veritable antique, but happily worked most years until 1970. The A1X was then overhauled for its centenary in 1972. But in 1975, the inner copper firebox was condemned, and it was only in 1980 that Fenchurch returned to work and has since been through several major overhauls. Most recently, Fenchurch was converted back to represent its original A1, rather than A1X form, and returned to service in February 2001. Designed by Southern Railway's Chief Mechanical Engineer Oliver Bullied as a scaled-down version of the Southern Railway's Merchant Navy class, the 86-ton Light Pacific Express passenger locomotive was manufactured from May 1945. Initially, the locomotives were named after West Country locations, but from November 1946, the naming policy changed. Serving Kent, Surrey and Sussex, the Battle of Britain was chosen with engines named after airfields, aircraft, squadrons and people. A 
Among the first British designs to utilize welding in the construction process, the Light Pacifics were affectionately known as spam cans due to their streamlined boiler casing. Manston, named after RAF Manston in Kent, was built at Brighton Works and outshopped in November 1947. The final engine to be built by Southern Railway before nationalization in 1948, Manston, originally numbered 21C170, was the last Pacific to be numbered using Bullied's unusual system. Renumbered 34070 under the British Railway scheme, Manston was not one of the 60 light Pacifics rebuilt in 1957. Instead, Manston was withdrawn from service in August 1964 and sent to Wooden Brothers Scrapyard in Barry, South Wales. Purchased from the scrapyard by the Manston Locomotive Preservation Society in 1978, Southern Locomotives purchased Manston 20 years later, transferring the loco to the Swanage Railway in Dorset in 2008. Oliver Bullard's 462 rebuilt Battle of Britain class Light Pacific, number 34059, was built in 1947 and rebuilt in 1960 before finally being withdrawn from service by BR on the 29th of May 1966. Emerging from Southern Railway's Brighton Works in April 1947, with Bullard's unusual designated number 21C159, the locomotive was named after Sir Archibald Sinclair who became the wartime Secretary of State for Air in May 1940. The engine arrived on the 25th of April 1947 at the Nine Elms Depot in South London to work the southwestern region main lines, but moved in April 49 to the eastern region Stratford Depot, hauling trains out of Liverpool Street as part of a trial of Pacific locomotives, returning to the Nine Elms Depot the following month. Sir Archibald next moved to Exmouth Junction in April 1951 and then to Salisbury in October 1955. The footplate was entirely enclosed and the controls within the driving cab were grouped according to the needs of both the driver and fireman. Bullied, it seemed, had considered every detail in his design. Like the Merchant Navy class, electric lighting was provided on both the locomotive and the footplate and supplied by a steam-powered generator. Even the steam pressure and brake pipe vacuum pressure gauges were lit by ultraviolet light to help the crews see signals along the track at night. And a steam-operated treadle opened the fire hole doors, enabling the firemen to more easily shovel coal into the firebox. Although similar in length to the Merchant Navy class, the boiler for the Light Pacifics was of a slightly smaller diameter at the smoke box end, and the cylinders were also smaller. However, despite being designed to reduce maintenance costs, the Light Pacifics soon developed a reputation for unpredictable reliability and high maintenance and operational costs. During a 1948 locomotive exchange, the Light Pacifics burned a third more coal per mile than the T9s they'd replaced. But Bully's boiler was unsurpassed, and the Light Pacific's performance level was outstanding. The Pacifics were very difficult to maintain in comparison to later standard classes. The chain-driven valve gear, which was subject to rapid wear, was inaccessible in the oil sump, and therefore more expensive to take care of. There were issues with the steam reverser too, and the boiler, due to the air-smooth casing, was difficult to access. From 1952, panels from the casing ahead of the cylinders were removed to assist with maintenance and lubrication. 
But the stopgap modifications were not enough, so British Railways decided in 1957 to rebuild 60 of the Light Pacifics along more conventional lines. As well as detail alterations, major changes included the substitution of Walshirt's piston valve gear, the reduction of boiler pressure to help reduce maintenance costs, and the removal of the air-smoothed casing. Instead, large square smoke deflectors were fitted. The rebuilding of the bullied light Pacifics added several tons to their weight, but produced almost brand new locomotives, whilst retaining the distinctive lightweight bullied Firth brown wheels and bullied superb free-steaming boiler. The rebuild, under the keen eye of team leader R.G. Jarvis, was undertaken at Eastleigh Works in March 1960. Following the rebuild, the most obvious difference was the removal of the air smooth casing, which produced an impressive locomotive in a more classical style than the original design. The boiler, two of the three cylinders, frames and wheels remained unchanged. Repair costs were reduced by 60%, and coal consumption was reduced by up to 8.4% following these changes. And although the rebuild solved most of the maintenance problems, whilst retaining the excellent features of the original design, there is conflicting evidence as to whether, from a performance point of view, the rebuilt Light Pacifics were improved by the rebuild. But they certainly performed well enough to obtain the higher 7P6FBR power classification. The rebuild increased the 44-foot 2 and 3 quarter inch engine's weight from 86 tons to just over 90 tons, which restricted the routes the rebuilt Light Pacifics could work. Sir Archibald Sinclair spent a brief period on the southern region's Kent lines until just before electrification in 1961. The engine then transferred to the familiar territory of Exmouth Junction Depot, before returning to Salisbury Shed in January 1965. Throughout this period, the locomotive hauled mainline services between London and the west of England. Number 34059 was withdrawn from service on the 29th of May 1966 and sold to Wooden Brothers Scrapyard in Barry, South Wales. The tender was disposed of by the yard to a local steelworks for use as an ingot carrier. The light Pacific locomotives were sometimes used on the non-electrified lines between London and Brighton, including what was to become the Bluebell line in East Sussex. A group based on the Bluebell Railway decided that the line really had to have an example of the ultimate in southern steam power, and rescued Sir Archibald Sinclair in 1979. Without a tender, the locomotive arrived at the Bluebell Railway on the 28th of October that year and the long fundraising and restoration process was started by the Bullied Society. Sir Archibald Sinclair is the first rebuilt Battle of Britain returned to steam in preservation. On the 24th of April 2009, the locomotive was formally launched by Viscount Thurzo, the grandson of Sir Archibald Sinclair. Designed by Charles Collard, the 5600 class tank locomotive was the only 062 wheel arrangement loco built new by the Great Western Railway. First introduced into traffic in 1924, the class was intended to replace the 062 Ts, which were widely used by South Wales Railway companies prior to their absorption into the Great Western Railway in the early 20s. There were no unusual parts used in the design of the class, so no prototype was produced. The first engine built was number 5600, and apart from the smoke box overhang, which ended at the buffer beam, the class used standard GWR parts, such as the standard number two boiler, four feet seven and a half inch driving wheels, and a three feet eight inch trailing wheel. A total of 200 locomotives were built in three batches. Numbers 5600 to 5699 
were built by the Great Western Railway at Swindon Works between 1924 and 1927. With a 5MT power classification, the 56XX class was a powerful mixed traffic locomotive. However, most of the class were confined to hauling coal trains in the Welsh Valleys, gaining the nickname Taffy Tanks. The nature of this work demanded high adhesive weight, plenty of power with good braking ability, but no need for speed or large tanks, and the three ton 1500 weight bunkers were satisfactory as the distances from pit to port were short. Five six zero zero was a class of substantial sized tank engines, being thirty seven and a half feet in length, and weighing sixty two tons. The high domed cab, bunker, and nineteen hundred gallon water tanks were closely related to the thirty one XX and forty two XX classes. One real feature of the class was that the tank engines ran better in reverse than in forward gear, making the trailing wheel into a bogey wheel. 5619 was part of the GWR batch built at Swindon in 1925 and was initially allocated to Chester but was soon sent for use in the Welsh Valleys. However, by the 1930s, the South Wales coal trade was in decline and the 5600 class was reallocated to other parts of the network. The first withdrawals from British Railways service for the 56XX class started with four locomotives in May 1962. 5619 was sent to Barry in 1964, and the last, number 6668, retired during the final month of Western Region Steam in December 1965. Nine of the class have survived into preservation, with eight ending up at Dye Woodham's yard. 5619 being the 40th locomotive to be rescued from Barry in 1973. It was restored and brought back to steam in 1981 by the smallest railway to restore an ex Barry locomotive, the Telford Steam Railway. The loco worked hard until the boiler certificate expired in 1991. The locomotive then rested whilst funds were raised to pay for the overhaul. 5619 was moved to the flour mill locomotive repair workshop at Bream in Gloucestershire for a full overhaul in 2006, returning once more to steam in 2008. After running in, the engine was hired to the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Railway for the 2008 and 2009 seasons, as well as appearing at galas throughout the UK. When British Railways reviewed their locomotive stock following nationalisation of the railways in 1948, one problem facing them was the lack of large modern tank engines in many parts of the country, particularly on the Southern Railway and Scotland, where pre-World War I classes were still in use. 80151 is a member of the BR Standard 4MT264 tank class, which was introduced in 1951. The locomotives were based on an existing 264T design built by Fairburn for the LMS, which itself had been derived from earlier Stanier and Fowler designs. Able to work all but the lightest of lines, the standard tanks hold a variety of traffic, from tightly timed commuter trains on routes such as the London, Tilbury and South End line, to general passenger trains and branch line work. Designed at Brighton Works by Robert A. Riddles, British Railway's chief mechanical engineer, 155 standard Class 4 MT tanks were built between 1951 and 1957. Although the majority were constructed in British Railway's Brighton Works, Derby built 15 and Doncaster Works turned out 10. The third most prolific BR standard, they soon became the general workhorses on all the regions except the Western region and were one of the most successful of all the standards. 
Withdrawals began in 1964, and the final nine were condemned by the Southern Region in July 1967. Number 80151, then based at Eastleigh Shed, was amongst them, and was sent for scrap to Woodham's Yard in South Wales. Bought for preservation in 1974 by a group based in Essex, work progressed very slowly until 1998. Number 80151 then transferred to Sheffield Park on the Bluebell Line, and having been overhauled from scrapyard condition, returned to steam once again in October 2001. Since then, the locomotive has been a reliable and consistent performer. Designed to run equally well backwards and forwards, it's ideally suited to the type of trains normally operated on the Blue Bell. Built in 1956, number 80151 was one of the last locomotives produced in the final Brighton batch of engines, numbers 80116 to 80154, and is the youngest Brighton-built loco in existence today. Standard four tanks were closely associated with the last years of the Bluebell line under British Railways, so it's particularly appropriate that number 80151 returned as this standard tank actually worked the line in British Railways time. This attractive 040 saddle tank, works number 3799, was built as Cardiff Railway No. 5 in 1898 by Kitson and Company, a locomotive manufacturer based at Hunslet in Leeds, West Yorkshire. No. 5 was one half of an exclusive class of engines called the Cardiff Railway class, which was built for the Cardiff Railway. The locomotive unusually had Kitson Hawthorne valve gear with the link above the running plate. When number 5 joined the GWR following the grouping in 1923, the Luca was renumbered 1338 and placed into storage until the engine was loaned to Stewart and Lloyds Limited during the Second World War. The loco was, upon return, transferred to Taunton Depot in 1943 for work in Bridgewater Docks, before a move to Swansea Docks in 1960. Finally withdrawn in September 1963, the little engine had covered 354,000 miles, becoming the last standard gauge steam locomotive absorbed into the GWR to be withdrawn from service. In April 1964, the saddle tank was moved to behind the up platform at Bleeden and Uphill Station in Somerset, but was more or less abandoned until 1987, when the locomotive was taken to Didcot and fully restored. The Great Western Railway's 6959, or modified hall class, was developed by Frederick Hawksworth, the GWR's last chief engineer. Supposedly, the first of Hawksworth's designs was an update to the halls class, yet the changes to the five MT modified halls were radical, including modifications to the frames, cylinders and saddle. There were alterations too above the running board. Hawksworth decided that the declining quality of coal necessitated a higher degree of superheating, and so with the exception of numbers 6966 to 6970, a larger three-row superheater and header regulator were fitted into Swindon No. 1 boiler. These modifications seemed to produce a freer running engine. Indeed, the 79s were renowned for their turn of speed. Well liked by crews, the later modified halls were known as greyhounds, as they seemed to be somewhat faster than their earlier classmates. In 1951, this locomotive, 
7903 found its place in history when the loco covered the distance for the Plymouth to Paddington boat train in less than four hours, becoming the first steam locomotive to achieve this. The GWR built the early locomotives, whereas the 79 series was built by British Railways post-nationalisation. Even so, the 79s remained true to Hawksworth's 460 Great Western Railway design. Part of this last batch of the modified Hall class, 7903 was outshopped at Swindon Works in April 1949 and named Formark Hall after the Derbyshire stately home. The engine's first shed allocation was Old Oak Common in West London in October 1950, where the locomotive spent most of its working life until being allocated to Cardiff East Dock from October 1963 until withdrawal from service in June 1964. Formark Hall was subsequently sold to the Wooden Brothers Scrapyard. The Formark Hall Transport Group purchased the 75 ton 1600 weight locomotive, the 129th to be sold into preservation by the Barry Scrapyard, in June 1981, and Formark Hall was taken to the Swindon and Cricklaid Railway. Initially, volunteers worked in the open air, and stripping down was painfully slow. The restoration to as built condition when exposed to the elements was sluggish too, but once under cover, the pace increased and on the 20th of September 2003, 22 years after rescue, Formark Hall appeared in steam in public. Long term, the Swindon and Cricklade Railway was unable to support such a large operating locomotive, so in early 2004, the group accepted an offer to move 7903 to the nearby Gloucester and Warwickshire Railway. Out of the 71 modified halls built, seven members of the class have been saved for preservation, but only two are 79s. Regrettably, number 7927, Willington Hall, seems destined to become a donor engine for several other projects. This BR standard four-class tank was part of lot 5788, consisting of 10 264 engines for the eastern region at a cost of £17,364. The last 8000 to be built with fluted coupling rods, 80078, emerged from Brighton Works on the 2nd of February 1954. The standard fours shared much of the basic design of the LMS Railways class 4 264s, but with considerable improvements. The most obvious modification was the curved profile given to the side tanks and capside bunker. This was a means of keeping within the L1 loading gauge requirements rather than a matter of style. The 8000 class had two smaller cylinders and the same higher pressure boilers as the class 4 460 tender engines which were more economical in operation and popular with footplate crews for their better running and improved cab facilities. 8078's first allocation was to Plasto Shed in East London, working long and heavy commuter trains on the London, Tilbury and South End line where the brisk acceleration of the standard four tanks and their reasonable speed made them ideal for hauling tightly timed suburban services. Transferred to Tilbury in December 1956, the 36-foot, 10-inch locomotive stayed until steam finished on the LTNS network. A brief move to Stratford Depot followed, and then the standard tank with a three-ton coal capacity was transferred to the western region at Shrewsbury in July 1962. The locomotive was on the move again to Croys Newark near Wrexham in North Wales during February 1963, where it was absorbed into the London Midland region. Built for a working life of 40 years, 80078 was placed into storage after just 11 years and was officially withdrawn from service on the 24th of July 1965, before being sent to Wooden Brothers Scrapyard in June 1966. 
A popular locomotive for preservation, there are 15 4MT survivors, including number 80078, which was purchased on the 20th of September 1976 by the Southern Steam Trust, becoming the 84th locomotive to be rescued from Barry. Restoration started in 1978, except progress was hampered by a lack of tools, cramped conditions and working in the open. Finally, on the 7th of November 1999, 80078 hauled its first trains in preservation on the Swanage Railway in Dorset. The origins of the Hunslet Austerity 060 saddle tank lie in the 1930s. But the Hunslet Engine Company of Leeds constructed its first industrial engine in 1865. Hunslet developed a reliable, strong and unpretentious iron workhorse to undertake shunting and transfer work with extended periods between overhauls, no matter what the working conditions. Based on its popular 1923 saddle tank design, Hunslet introduced an 060 with 18-inch rather than 16-inch diameter inside cylinders. Becoming the 48150 class, the first order was placed in 1937, and had it not been for the Second World War, industrial steam locomotives such as these would probably have then faded into obscurity. In 1942, the Ministry of Supply, acting on behalf of the War Department, anticipated a need for heavy shunting locomotives for military use in the fight for Europe. R.A. Riddles, seconded from the LMS to the Ministry of Supply, took charge of the design, and the Hunslet-built LMS Fowler Class 3F060T shunter was chosen. However, the locomotive building industry persuaded the Ministry of Supply to instead order a version of Hunslet's more modern 1937 design. This was an industrial tank locomotive which, with a shorter wheelbase, was a more easily maintained alternative. The design of the austerity was described as a blend of the standard 1937 Hunslet 18 and locomotives of similar power built to the order of Stuarts and Lloyds in 1941. Both designs were a natural progression from an 060 side tank built in 1930 for a colliery railway. The frame of the colliery locomotive was married to the 1937 Hunslet engine and the extended saddle tank of the Stuarts and Lloyds variant. A larger two and a quarter ton coal bunker was fitted and the cab roof had rounded eaves to provide a better loading gauge clearance. This trimming of the cab was to some extent necessitated by the increase in wheel diameter from four feet on the previous designs to four feet three inches on the austerity, so as to provide greater clearance above rail level and to permit the use of easily replaceable underhung springs. The boiler proportions were chosen to give quick steaming without being uneconomical during standby periods. The first updated 060ST 48 ton 300 weight 50550 class austerity was outshipped from Hunslet's works on the 1st of January 1943, less than six months after an order for 50 had been placed. With demand way beyond Hunslet's four to five locomotives a month build capacity, the company outsourced construction to six other locomotive builders, producing between them 377 austerity locomotives over four years. After the war, Hunslet continued to build the 060ST, constructing all except 10 of the 106 post-war produced austerity locomotives. 14 of these were purchased by the War Department for use at military installations. Built in 1953, number WD198 did not actually enter service until 1956. The 50550 class locomotive then moved between various military stores and depots before transferring to HQ Engineer Resources at Long Marston in the Midlands in 1961. Stored for a decade until 1971, 
WD-198 was restored to working order and given the name Royal Engineer and a further overhaul followed in the late 1980s. WD-198, the last operational steam locomotive owned by the Army, was finally withdrawn from service in 1991 and acquired by the Royal Corps of Transport Museum Trust for display at a new museum. But for the interim period, Royal Engineer was loaned to the Isle of Wight Steam Railway. In 2001, responsibility for the care of the locomotive passed to the National Army Museum. And seven years later, with the new museum plans shelved, the National Army Museum transferred the ownership of the locomotive to the Isle of Wight Steam Railway. Developed by the then Great Western Railway's chief mechanical engineer, Charles Collett, the GWR's 32 series Duke Dog or Earl class was a hybrid 440 constructed from the parts of two older locomotive classes. Between 1936 and 1939, locomotives were constructed with Duke class boilers on Bulldog class double frames. Withdrawn in December 1929, Duke number 3265 was fitted with the frames of Bulldog class number 3365, Charles Gray Mott. The only difference between this prototype and the production Earl locomotives was the use of 3 feet 2 inch bogey wheels instead of the 3 feet 8 inch wheels. One of the last classes to retain outside frames, 29 Duke Dogs were built, plus the prototype conversion. Number 3217 comprised of the frames from Bulldog number 3425, which was built in 1906, and as a later Bulldog, had the straight square frame over the driving wheel. The boiler came from Duke class number 3282, which was originally named Chepstow Castle and built in 1899. The first production batch of 3200 to 3219 was fitted with boilers that were either non-superheated or used one-row superheaters. Emerging from the rebuild at Swindon Works in March 1938, number 3217 was allocated the name the Earl of Barclay. But this name was not carried as the names were reallocated in 1937. Apparently the Earls in question indicated to the GWR that they would prefer their names on something a little more prestigious. The whole class was renumbered in 1946 upon the arrival of a new class of engines and 3217 became number 9017. Finally, the locomotive received its original name, the Earl of Barclay, in preservation. With a 2P power classification, the 56-foot long Duke Dogs were suited to light passenger work and were in regular use on the Cambrian line during the 1950s. Weighing in at 89 tons, including a 40-ton tender, they were one of the few classes light enough to be permitted on the wooden Barmouth Bridge. Following nationalization, the Earl class started to be withdrawn from service from July 1948, but number 9017 worked another 12 years before being retired in October 1960. The Earl of Barclay is the only Duke Dog now in existence as the remainder of the class was scrapped and the locomotive arrived at the Bluebell Railway on the 15th of February 1962. 9017 was most recently overhauled in 2002 when work included major boiler repairs, the fitting of a new smoke box tube plate which was manufactured in the Bluebell's own workshops and completely new sections of front and back main frames. The Duke Dog returned to traffic on the 1st of November 2003 
and was recommissioned by Charles Henry MP, a Bluebell Railway member. The Earl of Berkeley has in the past spent time with the Great Western Society at Didcot and in 2009 travelled to Llangollen in North Wales. An unsung hero of the steam era, this Great Western Railway 060 pannier tank worked not only as a shunting engine, but also undertook freight, local, suburban and branch line passenger work. Originating in 1898 with Church Ward at the Great Western Railway, the origins of the 57 class date back to the early 1900s and GWR's 27 class of six-wheeled shunting engines, which were converted from saddle tanks. Proving easier to access for inspection and maintenance, the Pannier Tank Loco soon became a mainstay for the Great Western Railway. Following a gap, Pannier Tank engine production resumed in 1929, and by 1949, a total of 863 57-class locos were built, making them the second most produced British class of steam locomotive. In 1933, some detailed design improvements during the production of number 8750 introduced the subclass 875, of which 3738 is a member. Emerging from Swindon Works in September 1937, the loco was allocated to Old Oak Common Depot in West London and ended its working life of about half a million miles in August 1965 at Cardiff East Docks. Sent to the Wooden Brothers Scrapyard in South Wales, 3738 became the 49th locomotive to be rescued from Barry when the engine was bought by two Great Western Society members. Three seven three eight arrived at Didcot Railway Centre in Oxfordshire in 1974, and by 1976 had been fully restored. Another of the 57 class, but several years later than three seven three eight, number three six five zero, was out shopped from Swindon Works in December 1939. As part of lot number three two five, the 50 ton loco cost 2,844 pounds new and incorporated an improved cab design. The first shed allocation for 3650 was in January 1940 at Tisley Depot in the Midlands. Over the course of the next 21 years, the locomotive was allocated to a further six depots around Bristol and South Wales, before being condemned on the 24th of September 1963. The same year, British Railways sold 3650 onto Stevenson Clark, and following removal of the vacuum brakes and steam heat, the locomotive was sent to PD Fuels Limited's Colliery in South Wales. Only minor maintenance was carried out during 3650's time at the private colliery, so eventually firebox bulges caused by the lack of washing out, a thin front tube plate and worn tyres forced the locomotive to cease working. On the 31st of October 1969, a Great Western Society member purchased 3650 and moved the loco to Hereford, where some restoration was undertaken. But heavier repairs were required, so ownership was transferred to a Didcot volunteer, and 3650 moved to Didcot Railway Centre in Oxfordshire the following year. Although virtually a complete engine, due to very poor condition, 3650 was intended to be a donor engine in the restoration of 3738. The remains of 3650 were placed into storage in 1972, but in 1984, GWS member Brian Thompson started to dismantle the parts. By the autumn of 1987, 3650 was stripped down to its frames when it was moved into the newly built works at Didcot. Under cover, restoration could finally start in earnest. 
And just to add another challenge to the already enormous task ahead of them, the Black Cupboard Gang, as they were known, agreed that the restoration would use Swindon methods as far as possible. With the exception of a few components that were beyond the skills and equipment available, all the work and manufacture of replacement parts was undertaken by the team. Very little, apart from raw materials and castings, was bought in. Finally, after more than 20 years of dedicated restoration work, the locomotive was completed. For the running-in period, 3650 was turned out in its industrial Stevenson Clark blue livery with red lettering. The loco was then repainted in its original 1939 Great Western Railway green shirt button roundel livery and was available for traffic from April 2009. Although the official launch into traffic was over the weekend of the 30th of June 2009. This is the Southeastern and Chatham Railway's Wainwright C-Class Goods Locomotive, number 592, which is now owned by the C-Class Locomotive Preservation Society. The Southeastern and Chatham Railway was formed when two neighbouring rivals, the Southeastern Railway and the London Chatham Railway, were amalgamated at the end of the 19th century. Between them, they operated services to London and throughout the southeast of England. The new company wished to standardise the freight locomotive design, so the locomotive carriage and wagon superintendent, Harry S. Wainwright, was tasked with evaluating two existing 060 freight locomotives. A former London, Chatham and Dover Railway B2 class, number 194, designed by William Kirtley, and a former South Eastern Railway O class, number 436, designed by James Sterling, were selected. The Kirtley design proved superior, and so an order was placed for 40 locomotives, with design modifications by Wainwright. The first 15, constructed by Nielsen Reed & Company, were delivered in June 1900. Another 15 from Sharp, Stewart & Co. followed soon afterwards. The remainder were built by the SECR at Ashford Works in Kent, except for nine which were constructed between 1902 and 1904 in the ex London, Chatham & Dover Railway Works at Longhedge in Battersea, South London. Number 592, dating from 1902, was one of the C-Class locomotives built at Longhedge and holds the distinction of being the sole surviving engine built at the South Eastern and Chatham Railway's South London Works. In total, 109 C-Class locomotives were constructed between 1900 and 1908, serving with the SECR and then Southern Railway from the 1920s. The long-term operational success of the C-Class was testament to Wainwright's colleague, Robert Surtees, who ensured the engines were built to a high standard. In the UK, the 060 tank locomotive was the most common locomotive type on all railways throughout the 20th century. Designed primarily for freight duties, the 060s were occasionally used for hauling passenger trains, although it's unlikely that Harry Wainwright's C-Class 060s ever worked the Pullman services. But Wainwright's goods locos did have one distinction, a steam-powered reverser, which was found on goods and shunting engines built by the South East and Chatham Railway and Southern Railway for more than 40 years afterwards. With three powered axles, the 060 has six 5-foot 2-inch powered driving wheels driven by the locomotive's pistons and neither leading nor trailing wheels. The lack of leading wheels at the front makes 060 locomotives unstable at high speeds and therefore unsuited to express passenger work. However, the absence of unpowered axles means that the 060s have all their weight pressing down on their driving wheels, giving the locomotives high traction and adhesion. Strong engines, they were suited for freight work, particularly considering their size, weight and fuel consumption. With a 38-ton tender, just over four tons of coal could be carried. Reliable and well-liked by crews, despite an open cab that offered little protection from the weather, the C-Class, which weighs just 43 tons and 1,600 weight, became Wainwright's standard goods design. And with the BR power classification of 2F, this 060 could pull remarkably heavy trains, albeit slowly. For a locomotive with such a humble role hauling freight, 
The beautiful southeastern and Chatham livery with polished brasswork, panelled cab and ornate paintwork was exceptionally elaborate, even for prestigious express passenger trains of the time. During the Second World War, and in common with other freight locomotives throughout the south of England, the C-Class engines were very heavily used, whilst repairs and maintenance were neglected. Subsequently, one C-Class locomotive had to be withdrawn in 1947. But these locos were so well built that the remaining 106, plus one rebuilt as a saddle tank, was still in existence when British Railways took control following nationalisation in 1948. Withdrawals of the remainder of the class began in 1953, but accelerated after the Kent coastline electrification at the end of the 50s. Although 60 C-Class locomotives were still in service in 1960, only three survived by 1962. All were in departmental service at Ashford Works. One of them was number 592, which worked as diesel shunter DS23 until December 1966. The same month, the C-Class Preservation Society, formed in 1962, was able to buy 592. The 51-foot, 7.5-inch long loco was kept in the old running shed at Ashford Works initially, but moved to the Bluebell Railway on the 16th of August 1970. The Society raised further funds to complete the restoration, which included work to the boiler and a badly damaged axle journal, before number 592 finally entered service in 1975. During 592's working life, this 060 loco was numbered 592 when with the South East and Chatham Railway, 1592 with Southern Railway, and 31592 under BR ownership. Now restored to the South East and Chatham Railway livery, the loco is number 592 once more. Probably the most glamorous identity change was when this C-Class featured as the Green Dragon in the Carlton TV film of Edith Nesbitt's book, The Railway Children. The locomotive was overhauled by volunteers following 19 years of service in 1994 and again during 2006 and 2007 when the locomotive and tender were also repainted. Indeed, no detail was overlooked. 592 was even given new seats and was ready for steaming up on Sunday the 7th of October 2007 before officially returning to service the following day. The third locomotive to leave Wooden Brothers Scrapyard this Church Ward Mogul, number 5322, miraculously avoided the cutter's torch. In total, 342 of the class were built, but this sole surviving early 43XX is one of only two moguls in preservation and the only operational example. In the summer of 1917, the Army called for the British Railways to supply a further 160 locomotives to help transport supplies from the channel ports to the front line. The railways had been asked for 080 locomotives, but as the Great Western Railway did not have the 080 type, it was agreed that the GWR would supply two 60s, which in terms of power and efficiency were practically equal to other companies' 080 engines. 5322 became one of 20 GWR 260s built at Swindon Works in 1917 and was sent new to France. The locomotive served on trains running between Calais and the railheads for the front line. Demobbed in 1919 at Chester, 5322 was based at Andover Junction at the end of 1947, working the Midland and Southwestern Junction railway line between Cheltenham and Andover. 241 moguls passed into the ownership of British Railways following nationalisation. Although some expired moguls started to be withdrawn from service immediately, others remained almost until the end of steam. The last six 43s were condemned in 1964, and 5322 was one of these, being taken in April 1964 from the locomotive's final allocated shed at Pontypool Road Depot to Wooden Brothers Scrapyard, also in South Wales. In 1969, after considerable persuasion, the loco was acquired by a Great Western Society member. The first ex-Great Western locomotive to leave the scrapyard for preservation, 5322 was restored to working order by devoted members of the Great Western Society's South Wales Group. 
5322 moved to Didcot in 1973 and was used on open days until around 1975, then becoming a static item. The loco then passed into the ownership of the Great Western Society and has now been fully restored. Returned to its 1919 appearance, including the khaki livery of the Railway Operating Division with white lettering rod and number applied to the tender, 5322 returned to traffic in November 2008. The steam locomotive has undoubtedly played a major role in the development of the British Isles, but we cannot forget the enormous contribution made by the human element. Not only yesterday's designers, engineers and railwaymen who work with the locomotives, but the people of today, the skillful and often utterly tenacious volunteers at Heritage Railways up and down the country, who devote much of their lifetimes to the restoration and care of these magnificent engines, as well as the often mammoth task of constant fundraising to keep these locos safely in steam. So next time you admire a fine British designed and manufactured locomotive, spare a thought for the millions of hours willingly given by exceptional men and women dedicated to the fight to keep our steam heritage alive.